Hi and welcome to another yet another exciting episode of the Upside Down Show. This is where we turn our things upside down and today we are into the gospel industry, gospel music industry. We are turning things upside down and today we are discussing uh, the, the music, just the music. What is gospel music? What what are we doing wrong? What can we do right? What can we do better? And to help us discuss um, this issue is one Davis, Dave, Anne Davis. Anne Davis has been here before. We were discussing Christianity and dressing before. And today you are on the spotlight again for gospel music. If you didn't know, uh, Anne is also a recording and performing artist. Uh, she has sung a few uh, gospel uh, vernacular songs in Kikuyu. Uh, one of them is Jason Morata, right? And uh, she's also a minister at Kingdom Seekers Fellowship Nairobi. So uh, she's one of the good and best uh, candidates for this topic. So Karibu sana, Anne. Thank you. So tell us, what do we mean by gospel music? Uh, gospel music, I'll just define the words as, the, as we hear them. Mm -hmm. Gospel, Kiswahili ni injili. Mm -hmm. Music is an arrangement of sound, mm -hmm. pleasing to the ear, when you arrange sounds to make them excite the ear. And music is not necessarily the sounds alone, it includes many things like the instruments, you have the backup, you have the, it's a combination. When you say music, you're talking about the instrumentalists, the lead vocalist, the backup, there's a microphone that was used. And so it's a combination of many things that are being done. If there's dancing, it's still in music. If they're clapping hands, it's still, uh, it's still in music. So when we say gospel music, generally we are saying, it is an arrangement of song, but they are done according to the word of God. Mm -hmm. Because gospel means injili, or the good news. So when we are talking about gospel music, what we are uh, basically saying is, we are having music, or we are having an arrangement of sound, plus everything that I said, but it is founded and grounded in the word of God. Mm -hmm. So when you hear gospel music, everybody will tell you, they're expecting it's a church song, or it's a Christian song, or it's a song that talks about God, or it's a song that is talking about the scriptures, the word of God. It has something to do with God and their beliefs in the Bible. Wow. Uh, maybe you can tell us what should be the contents of a gospel song. Wow. Uh, just as we said, the content of every gospel song is the word of God. That's the foundation. Mm -hmm. Every gospel song, if it's called gospel, should, be, should have the ability to touch a soul. Because that's what the word of God does. When you hear the word of God, it touches you, it heals you, it rebukes you, it trains you, it allows you to do things the way you're supposed to do. So the, every gospel song should be able to rotate around those things. And it's amazing that we will hear some of these songs being sung and you wonder, really, is that a gospel song? Because it has nothing. Those, the contents, the, the things that are supposed to be in the gospel song, the word of God, the evangelism in that word of God, the rebuking part of that song is not there. People are singing about other things. So the word of God number, I mean, the, the, every gospel song should have number one, the ground is the word of God. So it should contain evangelistic issues, items, or content when you're evangelizing to someone, it should be able to preach to you, it should be able to train you, it should be able to heal you if you're going through a situation. Those are the contents of a gospel song. It should be able to tell you if you're doing something wrong, it should be able to guide you. If you want to, if it's the youth people, uh, the young people, you want to do something. As you listen to a, a gospel song, it should be able to give you guidelines. It should be able, if you are not born again, it should be able to evangelize to you, to touch you in a way, to let you know that your ways are not right, or to draw you to God, or to bring you closer to your maker, because music is uh, food for soul. So as you're, you're listening to that song, as you're hearing that song, there's something that is biblical or divine or godly that is supposed to drop in your spirit to speak to you. 
Wow, uh, you talked about the word of God and that it should be the fundamental basis of a song, a gospel song rather. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that one would raise a bit of argument. People will ask, should I really quote the Bible as I sing my song? Or what kind of, uh, how do I extract the word of God and now apply it in as the, the, the context of a song? You don't really have to quote the word, word for word. Mm -hmm. But when you're preaching there, the, you can take a scripture or you can even take your story or your testimony base it on the word of God. Use that word of God to bring out a message. Because most of the gospel singers or musicians are supposed to be ministers and preachers of the gospel. And that's why most of the time you find they start as a gospel musician, but later they end up as a preacher. Why? It's the message they carry. So slowly by slowly, you find out that the words you're speaking, they might not necessarily quote exactly which verse is coming from, but it's founded and grounded in the word of God. You're not just using words from the air or the things that you hear people talk, but you're using your testimony or, you, or your life or the word of God or things you have had people go through, use them using the word of God, of course, as the foundation to write your song. Wow. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, before we move forward, move further into the discussion, there is one thing that has come up recently, mm -hmm. and it's a whole discussion in this industry, mm -hmm. the issue of modernism and Christianity. So, uh, and now Christian music rather. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what was the position of modern modernism in gospel music? Yeah, when you talk about modernism, I'm, I'm imagining it's the new, the, the, the new, new technology, styles, the technology, uh, everything that is coming up in terms of uh, technology, uh, style, uh, dressing, and so many other things. The, the whole issue of modernism. What's that position in the, the music industry? Okay, my opinion would be. Of course, I'm speaking as a musician too. My opinion would be, of course, when you as the days progress. Like the way the houses we lived in when we were growing up, they were the same houses we are living in today. Things have changed. People have upgraded. Even the places they live, you're looking for a better car, a better house, a better place to live in, a better place to. Yani everything is upgrading. And so when we talk about modernization or modernism in the gospel music, me I would encourage, especially every musician every gospel artist or minister, me white are ministers because you're supposed to be a minister, not a performer. Every minister, I would encourage them, upgrade your skill. God loves excellence. And um, I cannot really remember, but I'm reminded of a scripture in the Bible where I think the queen of Sheba, or the queen of Ethiopia went to visit Solomon. And when she went there, the Bible says that she saw the way things were arranged nicely. She fainted. So God loves excellence. So even in our churches today, I, I advise and I would, I would urge even the pastors that we have today and the worship teams that we have today and the musicians that are upcoming, invest in your music, invest in a skill, invest in a good producer, in a good studio, invest in a good keyboard. If you're a church minister, a, a, a pastor, uh, it's good to invest in good sound a good sound system. It helps you even as you're preaching and it helps your musicians as they are singing. There's a sound you sing, you hear the heavens open. But the places I've gone to minister, when you hold a microphone, you are like, the, the, the anointing leaves you. It's not like the anointing has left, but it's bad sound. So modernism, really we cannot ignore it. As the times are going, take charge of your gift, because it's also a gift and a talent, upgrading skill. I went to another studio the other day, and I'm sorry, I won't mention the place and the name, but you, you find squeeze him to tour. When you wake up, you want to be a producer. You just rent like a small place, take a keyboard, and funny stuff, a bad microphone, and you entice, you tell people you're a producer, really. So I, I would say modernism actually has a very great and a positive role to play if you use it nicely. The, the sound technicians you have should be, should upgrade their skill. Have a professional technician because you can have good sound. You know, it's a broad, I'm talking because it's a broad thing. And have, have a, a professional technician, a professional keyboardist. Go to school. It takes a little time. You can uh, enroll in a class of one hour. 
even as a musician, you don't need to be a keyboardist in your church to, to do a music skill or to do, to do an instrument. And it helps you. So basically what I'm saying, God loves excellence. As times are going, please upgrade. If it's a worship team, invest. Preachers and pastors, invest in your worship team. If you hear a good place, they can go and learn. If you hear somebody who is graced, they are able to teach your worship team in the vocals, in the way they sing. Because God doesn't want to be sung for any how. Mm -hmm. You cannot just say we are going to sing. Let me tell you, there are places you go to church and they are singing so nicely. So nicely, the Holy Spirit will just come. But there's a place you go just next door. They're singing so madhogodhani of fogo the rimpaka rom takatifu kabla shuke. You, because even God, you know, he loves things that are done in order. So modernism is a broad subject, but I would advise and encourage every musician, please upgrade go to a good studio, go to a good producer, do a clean video, a nice video, tap from experts. There are people who have been there. There are people who know good studios. There are people who know good, good schools for music. Go to a good place. When you're doing a, your song, be jealous with your gift. You don't just give any producer your song. Go and do something somewhere you feel it is a good place. And then, uh, still talking about styles and modernism and whatnot, I believe a good song should come or should be birthed from a place of prayer. Mm -hmm. And so even that style, if it is birthed in a place of prayer, that style, because most of the time, talking from a, a recording artist's point of view and a, a, a composer, most of our songs should not come from, I want to do a song. Mm -mm. You should not sit down with a pen and paper and say, I want to do a song. Most of the songs that are touching the world are songs that have not come from a study room. They are coming from a place of prayer. People, somewhere you were with God and, and somebody who has an intimate relationship with God. Somebody who has a close walk with God. Somebody who knows God. Because when you know God, there are there are styles or songs or words we will not hear in your song. Why? You know God so well. You have had a close walk with the Spirit of God. Every word that comes out of your mouth is ministration, is a seed. It, it should carry the life of God. So even the style that you're using, it was dropped from the Holy Spirit. So you should not be arguing with style. Why? The Holy Spirit dropped the words and the style in your spirit. Mm -hmm. And uh, so long as you're going to a good uh, to a good producer, he will help you come up with something beautiful. Wow. Thank you very much. We want, we're going to take a very short break and we will be right back. My name is Tony Waweru and this is Upside Down Show. We are with Anne Davis and we're discussing uh, gospel music, the gospel music industry. And uh, today we have quite a lot to turn upside down. And as we were discussing, we were discussing modernism. Uh, one of the things Anne said clearly that uh, if we don't have to argue a lot about the style you have to do about so many other things, but just let them be birthed in a place of prayer. The Holy Spirit is going to help you write that down, uh, write down the song in a nice way, a nice style, and look, invest in a good producer, in a good system, in a good sound. Everything should be excellent. Our God loves excellence. See you after this short break. <music>